Hello and good mo good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. Happy watercolor Saturday. That's what it is today. And I am so jazzed to be here today. First of all, it's absolutely raining cats and dogs. And I had to have another light in my office because it was so dark outside. So this is just the perfect place to be. It's the perfect place to be with all of you. And making this journal, you guys, this is going to be a marathon day. But, you know, and the kids have asked me, Phil asked me this morning, how long do you think you're going to be on today? And honestly, I have no idea. No idea. So we're just going to, we're just going to go. I, I'm going to try to take my time because I know a lot of you are following along with me. So, um, how many of you, okay, I got to see who else on and tell me if you're with me for the duration. You're going to see it through to the end. Tell me how many are able to do that. And I totally understand if you can't, you got to come in and, and out or you're going to watch this later. Um, totally understand. It's so crazy busy and everybody has stuff going on. So, Roberta, hello. I am so glad for today too. Hello, Linda. Good morning. Sandy to the end. Yes. <laughs> yes, Sandy. Yes. You know what? I may have to, okay, uh, if we go, if we start going over like, I don't know, three or four hours, I may have to take a 15 minute break. And you know, I'm drinking a lot of coffee. I may have to take a 15 minute break, but I will be back. So we're just going to play that by ear. Uh, Diana, she says, so it's all prepped and ready to go. Yes, great. Yes, you guys. And while I'm on and just saying hi to everyone, if you don't have any of your projects stamped, we're going to start with the very first one. This is the first one, the little church. You want to stamp that. You want to ink it in the two colors. So the two colors like we normally do, the dark blue first. So the dark blue, which is the 565. And then right over the top, the dark brown, which is the 969, so this one. But do not ink the brown where the snow would be. So these little lines right here where the snow is, don't add brown to that. Just the church and the tree is fine. You can add brown to all of those, totally fine. But try to um, avoid that brown onto these two little lines that are in front of the church, okay? And then draw a box around it. And I, the top of it is, uh, let me just measure this, it's about, it's about a quarter of an inch from the top. So you want to draw your box around it so that it looks like this. And you can see that church is kind of, I mean, it's pretty centered. The church itself is pretty centered. Um, the tree is pretty close to the edge. And um, you want to draw that box around it. And the box, if you don't have the nested die, the nested die is what I used in the journal. So if you don't have this, cut a piece of cardstock that you're going to use for all of these. A piece of cardstock that is two and a quarter by three and three eighths. Two and a quarter by three and three eighths. Just cut that with your, you know, paper cutter and then trace around it. That's kind of the easiest way to do it for me. Or use a piece of acetate. Uh, that's even better because you can see through it. So, um, do that while we're chit-chatting and I'm saying hi to all of you and you're getting your coffee ready because I have my coffee. Okay, is this cute? I've had to decide which one of my cute bee cups. You guys have sent me several of these. I love them. So I had to get one of my bee cups. I mean, I've got my water. Um, you guys, I'm wearing my slippers. I've got a sweatshirt on, <laughs> although it does say peace. You know, I had to find a, a Christmas peace sweatshirt. So I am just, I'm so comfortable. I'm just, I'm ready to go. <laughs> you guys, this is just the best. Um, Sherry says coffee. Yes, coffee. Absolutely. So, and two waters. So I'm, you know, I feel like I'm good. I also have two, um, water changes of water so that in case <laughs> I'm using the white paint and you know, I, it's going to get all just nasty in there. So uh, Marianne says, all prepped, so excited, coffee pot in my craft room. Yes, <laughs> yes, Marianne, that is awesome. This is my favorite, okay, I know I have said this multiple times, this is my favorite project, but this is my favorite project, and I just, I appreciate so many of you being on here with me. We got 48 already, you guys. I thought, you know what, I might have 20 people on here with me, who cares? But I see I've got 48 on here already. Um, I 
I felt so compelled to make this journal. And I don't know about you. I mean, I know you're, everybody is busy. I have been like so crazy busy. And I it was so compelled to make this journal. And I just, finally, I just went to visit Kendra and I had a few days there and I thought, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put that journal together and have plenty of time. Well, I couldn't, I couldn't, I didn't have a concept of it. And I just knew that I wanted to use these scripture verses. I wanted it to be the Christmas story. And that's all I knew. And I just, I kind of went back and forth because I, um, I have the scripture verses and you know, the Bible, it's, it's serious. It's not jokey. It's not cartoony. It's serious and it's heavy and weighted. And this is a huge message. And I didn't want to um, lessen the message by making it, you know, too cartoony. But I also wanted to get the concept across. And my other big thing, I did not want to exclude anyone who wanted to make it because it was too complex. So that's the reason. And I know some of you have asked and wondered why I didn't just make the Mary and Joseph and the wise men and the shepherds. I just, I felt that it was too complex for people to color and watercolor. So I'm starting this way. And I, I just went back and forth. I'm not kidding you. And I spent two days trying to figure out how in the world I should make this journal. And I really prayed about it because I, this is a, this is a, a huge thing for me. It's a, it's a, it's a, um, it is the Christmas message. And I felt really compelled to do it. And you know, after about, I don't know, I think I got there Sunday night, all day Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday early, early, actually a, a full day of trying to figure out Tuesday early, early morning at about three o'clock in the morning, I woke up and I had a visual and I saw it and I felt like this is what I wanted to do. I, I wanted to make it snowy. Uh, I wanted it to be a simple concept, but I want the message to be still be there. And I feel like this is simple enough for everyone to do. Anyone can do it. And it's not going to be, um, I, I also don't want you to do these projects and feel like you're not happy with how they turn out. So it's, it, it, it and it's, it's a little hard to explain like what I actually, my actual visual was, but I put out the next four pages in that day. And then the next day I finished the rest. And then I put the stamps together and I just, I felt like it just, it just flowed. And normally when I'm making something, I, um, I see everything in pictures. I see it. I don't really uh, think about it as um, a concept in, you know, words. It's kind of hard to explain that, but I see it in a visual. And this is what I, this is what I saw. I saw it as a, um, scenic foundation all in one square. I saw it as a fluid book that kind of went page to page. And I saw it with the scripture verse, simple, the whole journal, simple. So that was my vision. I might try next year to see if I can't do that, you know, with the characters, try to make them simple. Um, because that would also be really fun to do. So, you know, who knows what next year, but you know what, every year we're gonna have a nativity, um, journal, some sort of nativity journal that we can do for those of us who want to make it to celebrate the message and the story of Christmas. So um, enough of that, you guys. I just, I wanted to um, kind of explain that to you a little bit. Um, Becky says, we need more faith-based projects. Yes, we do. It is, it is so important. And especially, I just have felt it this year with, it just seems like there is something coming from all sides, all sides um, at us. And I heard, I heard this, um, right? Man, I can't remember if I saw it on a reel or I heard somebody say, it. I wish I would write these things down when I hear it. And he was talking about um, all the heavy things that are going on in the world. He's like, we as people, humans, we're not meant to know all of this. We know too much. And it's so heavy and weighing on us. Um, and especially, you know, uh, the um, things going on around the world. You know, back when I was little and some of you, when you were little, I didn't know anything. I heard, we heard Walter Cronkite on the news and that was it. And we didn't hear all of these things that are going on all around us. And um, so it is a lot, it's a lot to take in and it's heavy and it's discouraging, but we have hope. 
we have hope in uh, Jesus because he came and he, you know, came to live and to die. And because of that, our sins are forgiven. And by faith, we believe and trust in him so that we can be with him forever. So it is a message of hope. There's always hope for us. And we need that. We absolutely need that. We need that message of hope. So we're going to make it today. And um, I'm so happy that you guys are all with me. I just, I can't believe it. I was, um, I did not expect the response that I got for it. And um, how many of you have bought this set and are making this journal? So I just, I'm so jazzed about doing it. I just, I'm so excited. And I'm just, I'm so excited to have all of you on here. So um, we're going to get to it. Um, I want to uh, make sure I give all of you a chance if you're not, if you don't have your first project stamped already to do that. Um, <clears throat> we're going to just kind of go through the whole journal. We're going to go through this whole thing. We're going to do all the watercolor projects first and then we'll go back and then we'll get it all assembled into our journal. So uh, hopefully I haven't forgotten something because, you know, I try to remember everything, but uh, normally I'm doing a page or two at a time or I'm recording so I can push pause and then I can go back and get whatever it is that I forgot. So I am by myself here and I hopefully I haven't forgotten anything. And you know what? This morning I'm putting everything out and I'm like, where is the cover for the journal? I never, I never cut the cover. I never cut the cover. So that would have been a little difficult um, to put this together without the cover. So I did cut that really quickly, like literally in the last few minutes before I came on live. So I'm now I'm a little paranoid that I've forgot, forgotten something else. But you know what? You guys are so great that if that happens, you will forgive me for that. So, okay, you guys, um, it is just a joy. And I see all your comments on here. Um, Edna, can't paint as fast as you do, but we'll watch and take notes. So. I am going to try to go slow, but if you can't finish, um, it's going to be recorded on here. So just, you know what, don't panic if I get too far ahead. Uh, I, I, you know, and if I do take a break, that'll give you a chance to kind of catch up a little bit too, but everything will stay recorded. Everything that I'm doing on here will stay recorded. So even if you get through the first half of the project and you just, you know, it's overwhelming and you want to quit and then start on the next one, totally fine to do that. Okay, Ruthann says we can wing it with you. Yes. <laughs> Michaela's so excited to do this. Me too. Me too. I don't know if I've been excited about a project as much as I am this one. And especially when I had that concept. And um, I have to tell you this too, while I'm talking about, you know, getting a visual is that, you know, and I may have told you guys this already. So some of these things are just, they're so... Um, you know, um, cinched in my brain and the way that, um, God sometimes moves in our lives, you know, it's an, it's an altar because it's so big and it's so unforgettable that we make a mental altar to it because it is just, it's something that we know is God and we know what's outside of ourselves. And I know my ability and I know when it's outside of myself and I know when I have an idea and I know when it's an inspired idea. I know that. And I have seen that so many times in my life. And one of those times, big times, was uh, back in 2009 when we almost closed everything. We almost closed up our business. Um, we had the majority of our business, probably 90% was wholesale. We had many, 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 many hundreds and hundreds of stores across the country in the U.S. and then um, across Europe and, you know, internationally and all of those stores. I mean, literally almost maybe 5% are still open. We lost all of those stores really, really quickly. And, you know, both of us are in this business. So it was a it was a huge blow to us and we almost closed. We had everything up for sale that we could possibly sell. We, um, we drove one car, uh, the, the heater didn't work. The air conditioning obviously didn't work. We drove one car. Um, and you know what? It was fine. It was totally fine. And a lot of things that we think we need, we really don't need. And we were thankful for what we had, but we almost didn't make it. And it was just the grace of God, the absolute miracle of God that we are still here. And I know it's because of his people. I know it is. Because he sees you and he knows 
when you're discouraged. And I feel like that's the reason that we are still here. And I know that he sees you and you think that maybe you're by yourself in your house or maybe you're lonely or maybe Christmas is a hard time for you. And um, God sees you and he hears you. And, and, and here we are as a you know little business. God resurrected this business from the dead. And um, as an, a way to encourage, I know he did. And that's what we do. It changed. It changed all of us um, when that happened. And that was in 2009 and 10. Uh, we had the worst years in 2009 and 10, almost closed, had our house for sale, everything for sale. And we worked around the clock. We literally worked. We went to work and we worked till one or two or three in the morning. We had to let all of our staff go. And we just worked around the clock. And God somehow, in his miraculous way, brought this business back for his glory and for his people so that we could somehow be an encouragement and somehow be a vehicle of encouragement. And I've never forgot that. And I, I didn't have any time to work. I didn't have any time to design anything. We literally were at the shop seven days a week. And I came home, we had to do a show. We had to do a show, it was the last one. And it was a wholesale show and we were gonna go and we pieced together the booth. Our kids were working for nothing. And um, we pieced together the booth and we, um, you know, tried to get everything together. We were on our last credit card, literally. And we had nothing new really to release. We, we kind of changed some things and it was a do or die. And had we not um, sold anything at that time, we would have probably closed up our business. And you know what? Trusted God for the next step. And um, we went to that show and everything changed. And I, at, at that time, I, I had to come out with a new release. I had no time to do it. And I came out with that release in uh, literally two weeks. That is absolutely unheard for me. I could never, I could never have done that. And I have felt that that was the Holy Spirit that inspired me. We got some big accounts. We got some, um, we got a big distributor. Everything turned around at that show. And uh, that was a big altar for me. And I have felt that ever since. I have felt that inspiration. And I feel that God, this business now belongs to him. And um, all of it is to encourage um, those of you who may need some encouragement. And I can see it. I can see it in these groups that have started up on Facebook, Ruthann, Carlos, your groups, bringing people together and, um, you know, praying for each other, encouraging each other. Uh, you've got, you've made these friends across the world. And um, I just, I'm so blessed by that. I'm so thankful. I'm just, I'm thankful every day. You guys, I'm thankful every day um, to still be in this business, to still be here. We had, we had our house up for sale. We never could sell it. We're, we still have it by the grace of God. Um, so anyway, I didn't mean to preach a sermon this morning. <laughs> I really didn't mean to do that. But I am so overwhelmed by the way that God moves. And, you know, those were rough times. And just because you are going through a rough time, is not does not mean that God is not with you. He is with you. He is never away from you. And you know, just like when you're going through when things get better, that's not the indicator that God is blessing you. God blessed us so much during those rough hard years. And sometimes it takes going through it and seeing looking back on it that you realize, oh my goodness, you know, this was um this was God at work in our lives and he had a bigger purpose than what we could see. And sometimes it takes looking back. So anyway, um, those were rough years. I'm thankful to be through it. Thankful to be here still. I never thought at that time that we would still be uh, making stamps, that Art Impressions would still be here after 2009 and 10. I never thought that. I thought it was over. And here we are. And so, and here you are, our, our, our people that we call you our people. And we are all of us, our family, all of us are so thankful. Thankful to all of you who have supported us over the years. My goodness, it's just been an absolute blessing to us. So um, anyway, Kathy, with God, all things are possible. Yes, they are. They absolutely are. And sometimes in the darkest times, in the heart, the hardest times where it is to trust, we just trust. We don't understand and we just trust. And God sees us and he hears us and he is never away. 
And even when it seems like um, things are taking forever, it was years and years for us to climb out of that, years. And um, even in those hard, hard times, I know that God has been faithful to us and we are still here. So you guys, um, I just, I didn't, like I said, I didn't plan on sharing all that, but you know what? You're the, our people and I'm so thankful for you. And I know that you, um, that you get that. You get it. So, um, okay. The thing about the, that was the pandemic. Oh, the thing about the pandemic for me was art impressions. Diane, you know what? I felt that too in that time. Like God, you know, he knows ahead. He is, isn't just in the present. He's in the future. He's in the past. He's, all, all, he's, he's everywhere. And I feel like he saw those of you who are alone during this pandemic, he saw you and he wanted us to be an encouragement. I, I just know it. And, um, and here we, here we were, we were, you know, not going to make it. And God pushed us, you know, God had another plan for us and somehow he resurrected us. And I know that it was, a, I felt like it was a blessing for people who were stuck at home and couldn't get out and discouraged and depressed and, um, afraid, afraid. Cheryl, thank you. God puts words in our mouth. Someone needed to hear these words. I have had that so many times. Somebody will say something and it just resonates with me. And we just know, we just know. And when things are hard and, you know, everything looks black, we have a hope. We have a hope because of Jesus and his, his birth and his death and his resurrection. That's our story. That's our hope. When everything looks terrible, we trust that, that, that God will never leave us. And that's our hope. So, Diane, meant to say the best thing about the pandemic was our impressions. Thank you so much. You don't know what that means to me. Thank you, Diane, for that. Um, Ruth Ann, God brought us all together. He did. And isn't Ruth Ann the most encouraging person? She is amazing. I have just, I am, I thank God for her. She is such an encourager. And this has been a ministry for her, and she loves her people too. And Kathy, the two of them are just, they're, they are just, they're amazing. They are just amazing. And all of you who are friends now from that group, it's just, it's so fun. It's so fun to see that. Okay, Bonnie, Kleenex was not on the supply list. <laughs> Thanks, Marianne. I know, I know. I, um... I have a little journal that I kept during those really, really rough years. And um, I go back and read through it and I can see where I was. And I I would get up early, early in the morning and I, we would, you know, have to be at work at, you know, eight o'clock. And, and, you know, we would be there till two or three, three in the morning. And we had this, we had this comforter that was at the shop and we used to take naps with it, you know, it would be late. And we would run to, you know, take orders to, um, you know, UPS and the, and the post office before they closed. And then we would come back and start the night shift and, you know, we'd turn the phones off and that's when we would try to catch up and we were so behind and we had this blanket and we would just, we would take naps in the office. And some of the, um, best memories are through the hard times. That's, and it just seems like that's how we grow. How do we know that we can trust God if we don't see him at work? How do we know that? We don't know. And when we look back and see how he has kept us and he has provided for us and been there for us, that's how we know that we can trust him. So it was, it was, um, it was a rough, rough few years, quite a few years actually. Um, but here we are. And, um, I have to tell you one more story, you guys. Um, I'll tell you one more story before we went to that show. So the show was in, uh, in January. And when, when you're in wholesale, we were in wholesale, we were mostly in wholesale. Um, everything kind of shuts down in October, you know, in November, and December, because the stores are clearing out their inventory and they want to kind of clear that out. So they don't order a lot until, you know, the next year. And so things really slowed down. And that was also really hard. And we were trying to get ready for this show. We were making product and I was trying to get, you know, all this new stuff done. And in my mind, all of this time, uh, in those years, I was thinking if we could just get through, you know, until some of these things sell, our house sells, um, 
we could, you know, we'll sell everything we have and then we'll just see what opens up. You know, uh, we don't, you know, we don't know what the future is going to be, but we can trust that God does and he's not going to, he's not going to leave us. So we're going to do everything we can. And then, you know, when that time comes, when we liquidate everything and we close our doors, then we'll, we'll know what to do. We'll know what to do next. And so I, in my mind have, you know, thought that our impressions was finished. I really did. I, I was really, I, I never thought that we could come back. I, I never occurred to me. And this has been my thing for years and years. I, I, you know, I started on a kitchen table, started out making little educational stamps. And this has been my baby, my heart, you know, but I just felt like it was over and we were going to move on to something else. And we went to a wedding, uh, one of Kendra's friends, uh, got married and we went to her wedding. It was just the neatest wedding. And it was really simple. It was just cake and, um, punch and, um, it was a big, um, her dad was a pastor and there was a lot of people at the wedding and a lot of people were milling around and we, um, we, we came, we came to the reception and there was really nowhere to sit. There was just a lot of people there. It was a lot of kind of noise, people talking that knew each other. And we saw a friend of ours that we hadn't seen in a long time. And he came over to us and they had in the, in all of this, uh, you know, in 2009, when everything was so bad, they lost their business. They had a furniture business. They lost their business. And so I knew that he knew what was going on and he, he could feel for us because that's what we, that's what was happening to us. You know, we were going to lose our business. We were going to lose a lot of things. And this was in, um, the wedding was in December. And so he came over to us and there's just people, there were hundreds of people at this wedding. We were in this big, in, at this church and he came over to us and said, how are you guys doing? And I said, you know what? I mean, we're, we're, you know, it's been, it's been hard, but we're doing okay. And he said, can I pray for you? And he put his hands on our shoulders and I'll never forget this. This was a, this is another altar. And he prayed that God would turn the business around. And I, it's such a simple thing, but it was so profound to me. It struck me like a lightning bolt. It struck me and I never thought that. I never prayed it. I prayed a lot of things in those years. I never prayed that God would turn the business around. And he prayed that it struck me like lightning. And you know what? Come January, we went to that show. That's exactly what God did. He turned the business around, completely around. And we got some huge, huge accounts. Everything changed. Everything changed. They were some, there were a lot of hard years that followed, but we can never put God in a box. And I had in my mind how, what was going to happen. I sort of, you know, here's what's going to happen. We're going to, um, you know, we're going to come out of this, you know, we're going to do something different. We just, we need to get these things sold. We need to pay off these debts. And, um, but I never thought that I never thought that God could turn it around. I never thought he would. And I, everything changed. And the business changed. It became not mine anymore, not ours, but it became his. And that's where we are. That's where we all are. And here in 2023, we're still here. It has been years since that, since that day. And uh, God has, has another purpose for us. And so that's, that's why I'm so, I've just been so jazzed about this, um, this journal um, I just, I love doing these faith-based things. I'm going to do more of it. I'm going to do more of it. I feel like we need to. And, um, and I just, I'm so thankful you guys. I'm so thankful. And I know so many of you could, could say the same thing, seeing God at work in your life. And maybe you're in the middle of a really dark time. Like we were really dark time. Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. You have no idea what God can do. I had no idea if somebody had told me in that December, here's what's going to, here's what art impressions is going to be in 13 years or 14 years. I would have never believed it. Never. But God is so big and he is so able. And you know, it, it is, it is, uh, always outside of ourselves. We just trust. We trust, we work hard, but we trust and God is faithful. So don't lose hope, friends. That's right, Ruthann. Don't lose hope. 
Um, Brenda, yes, we need to have more faith. Yes, we do. You guys, thank you so much for commenting. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> oh, Rika. Oh, you guys, Ruth Ann and Kathy are amazing. Um, Norma, so kind. You guys, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for your comments. You know, we are, we have a connection. You know, we are, if we are followers of Jesus, and, and if you're not a follower of Jesus, and maybe you want to be, it is, it's very simple. You know, uh, uh, the Bible says to just, you know, trust in the Lord and you will be saved. Ask Jesus to, you know, change your life, uh, confess your sins, and you are saved. God has done all the work. We just have to accept it. So if that's you and you don't know, um, it is it is such an easy thing. Jesus came to die for us, to, to forgive our sins so that we can be with him forever. That's the message. That's the whole message of the gospel. And we just believe by faith. And we trust that Jesus will change us and make us more like him. And we commit to following him. And um, and we have that hope of salvation. So, um, Peggy, loved you for so many years. Thankful for you and the whole family. God bless you. God bless all of you. You are our people. And we are so thankful for all of you. So, okay, you guys, let's get to this journal. I am just, I'm so jazzed to do it. And I've already spent a half hour. <laughs> spent a half hour so I I don't even know how long it's going to take but you guys if you can't be with me the whole day I mean it might be the whole day I I don't know um then you know just come back come back and watch um the recording later and those of you who are on with it uh, on with me for the uh, marathon day I love it um Okay, you guys, I am going to flip my camera around and we are going to get started on our project. Yay. Okay, here we go. Okay, I've got this set. I also have a charger right here, you guys, in case my phone, <laughs> in case my battery dies. Um, I tried to think of everything. Okay, let's see. Here we go. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And tell me, I, you know, uh, Diane, I'm here for the do whole day. Yes. Jeanette, we love our Bonnie time. Thank you so much. Can't stay for the whole new marathon, but thanks for doing this. Teresa, we will take you for as long as we can take you. Um, Marianne, the Lord takes us through the dark night of the soul. Yes. Until he shows you the light. That is so well said. That is exactly right. Um, Brenda, thank you so much. Oh, you guys, I'm going to, I'm just going to go back and read all of these comments. This has, you guys are just the most encouraging people. And, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, it's, you know, work is hard. Days are hard. It's hard. You know, the times we live in. You know, they're hard, but somebody will say something that is just so encouraging to me and it just makes my day. It just changes my whole perspective. And, you know, when you realize that it's just, it's not about you in the world. It's not about me. It's about Jesus and what he wants to do for his people. And he wants to encourage, you know, those of you who need to be encouraged. And don't we all? Um, okay, so we are going to start with this project and... We're going to start with page one. We'll come back and do the cover, but we're going to start page one. And this is how it's set up. This is how all of the pages are set up. So if you um, are all ready, you've probably watched the tutorial and you've cut some of these things. If not, that's okay. Um, we're going to go through the projects. And if you need to assemble your journal later, you can totally do that. But, but this is how I saw it too, was that everything is simple and the same. Because um, I just, I wanted it to kind of be fluid um, and to show the concept of it, you know, without being too literal. Because we have it here. We have the story here. I mean, what an encouraging message, you guys. It's just, I just love Christmas. I absolutely, I love Christmas so much. And I'm sure you guys do too. So we're going to start with this one. The little church and it reminded me so I and I want to hear you guys tell me what you think too I um 
was thinking about my earliest Christmas memories. And I have so many Christmas memories now, different chapters, because I have Christmas memories when I was little. I have Christmas memories, you know, when my kids were little. And now I have Christmas memories with my grandkids. And so it's just, it's just all these new chapters, you know, have changed. But when I think back on my earliest Christmas memories, it was all around um, the Christmas program at church. And this is what it reminded me, this little church, we went to a little church um, and it was a little Lutheran church and I was in the Christmas program. My mom brought us to church. We walked, we didn't have a car and we walked to church and, you know, I was in the Christmas program and I loved it. And how many of you guys can relate? Because what I remember most about it was the treat bag after. And it was a brown paper sack and I, I have such a clear visual of it. And I was little. It was a brown paper sack, so nothing fancy. It had an orange. It had peanuts in the shells. And it had a candy cane. And maybe it had a few other candies in it too, but those are the ones that I remember. And I was so excited about that, <laughs> about that treat bag. So I, I mean, I want to hear you guys. If you... What's your, you know, while we're doing this little, um, while we're doing this little church, I want to hear what you guys, your memories are, your earliest childhood memories. And I, um, I just loved that. I just loved it. And, um, I remember, I don't remember what actually I was in that program. I think I probably was an angel. I remember a, a hanger one time with, um, with a garland, a glitter garland on it. So I feel like I was an angel at one time, but I remember the treat bag. What does that say about me? Um, Norma says, I too am Lutheran. I got the same type of treat bag after Christmas service. Maybe it was just in the Lutheran church. But yes, I just, I have such a clear memory of that. <laughs> so, okay, you guys, let's get to our project here. Um, I am going to use my number four brush. So if you haven't got your number one brush out, you're going to need it for these projects. So um, we're going to start out with our number four, but you're going to need your little number one brush. And let me just, do I have a, let me just grab another one here just to make sure I have a couple. Okay. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do is, okay, is anybody, I'm Lutheran too, Brenda. Packed my lunch. Oh, <laughs> Marianne says, packed my lunch last time. It's lunchtime here. Oh, my word. Yes, you must be on the East Coast, Marianne. Um, I should have thought about a coffee pot that I could just plug in here. Anita, I'm Lutheran as well. Same treat bag from me at a small Baptist church. That is so funny. Okay, Kathleen, what color did I stamp in? Two colors. So um, the dark blue first. And then the brown. And you want to you wanna stamp these off at least twice. Now, these are rubber. So rubber hangs onto the ink a lot more um, than the clear. So you want to stamp these off at least two times. At least two times. And just don't ink the, the little sidewalk here. Don't ink that with the brown. Just leave that blue. So you're going to do the blue over the whole thing. And that's the 565. And then you're going to do the brown, the 969, over everything except for the little sidewalk. Okay? And we're going to start out by pulling the color out of the lines. Here we go, you guys. And we'll start out with this color under the overhang of the roof. Uh, that's because that's where it's the darkest. And I always kind of start there. I don't, you know, it's just a, it's just something I do. Maybe because I see that dark shadow um, right away. I see that dark shadow right away. And so I just, I want to get that, um, I want to get that in. Let's do the front of the stairs, just like that. And you can see now that it's starting to get, you know, that three-dimensional look. All right, so now um, go ahead and just kind of fill in some of this color in the tree here. Just do that with your brush. Just, just fill that in a little bit. We're going to add a little more color to that later. And then I'm going to add some blue, some of the dark blue to my palette. So let me just slide this over a little bit here. This is the 565. Let's put a little bit more of this on here. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to dip our brush in water and just pinch it off a little bit. Okay, so here's what it looks like when we normally pinch it off. See how flat it is? So in this case, we're going to pinch it off, but only just slightly. And then we're going to draw right alongside this path. You're going to just put that ink, let that ink just kind of bleed into this pathway like this. And do the same thing. If you need to turn, turn your paper, do that same thing over here on this side. And let that kind of bleed in to the path. And then we're going to take a little bit more of the blue. And we're just going to add a little more color to it. And that's a, this is a really great way to do a little snowy, um, a little snowy path. And then, you know, since we're in this blue, let's just do the shady side of, um, of the church. And we'll just color this in dark because this is going to be on the side. So we're going to get that. Um, we're going to color that in just a little bit darker. Okay, so now we've got that done. Now we're going to take um, our brush and take a little bit of this blue, just a little tiny bit. And we're going to just create a bank on the side um, of the church of the of the roof and then we're going to do the same thing over here just create this bit little bank and that just lifts that roof up do you see how that just changes um, the look of that and it just creates this bank and gives that roof a little dimension and then this in here, this would be really dark in here. And we could go just a little bit darker in there too. All right, so now let's add um, a little color to our palette, the 969. And we're gonna get some of this color on the door. We're just gonna brush this in. And you can, you can make your door whatever color you want. Maybe you want a red door or something bright, bright color. I should have done a red door. That would have been cute. But I have got a brown door. Okay, so now I'm just going to come in with my little twin tone and just darken in that little um, knob, doorknob. And now let's take the yellow and some of these little things, if you're, you know, if it's, if you're falling behind a little bit, some of these things you can do later, like put in your little window panes. If you need to catch up, um, don't worry about this right now. You can, you can always put these little window panes in later when you're finished. And these are just little lines basically because these windows are so small and you know, I want the lights on in, in the church. Got all the lights on. Can you guys hear that rain outside? It is just pouring. Okay, rec rectangle is two and a quarter by three and three eighths. Yes. Um, Suska, I can relate. I grew up in a Lutheran church and I love getting the candy and an orange at Christmas Eve service. Yes, and it was Christmas Eve. That's when it was. And then we would, you know, come home and open presents. And it was just, oh, I can't believe how many Lutherans. So my family, my mom is German. And she came over um, to this country from Germany after the war. So she um, came over on a ship, came through Ellis Island, came clear across the, the country to Oregon because... Um, she had a an aunt here who sponsored her to come. 
And, um, and so she came clear over and she, um, met my dad and they got married and then he, they had two little girls, my, myself and my sister, they had two little girls. And then my dad, uh, passed away when I was just a baby. So it was just my mom and my sister and I. And so, um, we were always in church, you know, she, we were always in church and she had a lot of stories about being in the war and being a refugee in the war and, you know, how God took care of her and provided for her. And, um, it was just her and her mom. So, you know, the stories of God's faithfulness, like they go back for generations. Forgot this little window up here. Okay, how are we doing? Are you guys with me? Um, Ruth Ann, keep your testimony with this video. Oh, okay. Suska so says, my, fa my family is German as well. Yes, Germany, but my mom, so during the war, she was from Lithuania. They were German, but they lived in Lithuania. And so, you know, all of that... Um, you know, with the war, they were deported back to Germany. And so they were in refugee camps and she, she had some pretty, um, pretty terrible stories to tell. She's gone many years now and with Jesus, but, um, she was a tough little German woman and I'm 5'10". My mom was barely five foot, barely five foot, just little, little person, but really, really strong and, you know, determined little German woman with a thick accent. Uh, my war. Oh, Marianne, my dad came after the war from Greece. Really? It's just, it's so neat. And the, um, the kids saw her, um, you know, where they came across, you know, at Ellis Island. And it's just, it's so neat to, to see all these people that have come. I mean, we're such a, such a melting pot in this country. And, you know, the stories, all of these people have stories to tell you know, coming here and, you know, she came here and didn't, you know, ha couldn't speak English and met my dad. And then he passed away after just, you know, I think they were only married five years and, you know, she couldn't really speak English. We never had a car. She never learned to drive a car. Um, she never really learned to write. She could, you know, write her name and a few things, but, um, but you know what? We were always provided for. We always had enough and, you know, we were always in church. So those are my memories of, you know, being in that Christmas program and um, especially at Christmas times, just such good memories of that. Um, okay, let's keep moving on here. So we're going to, um, <clears throat> what should we do next? Let's put in our little branches that um, come across the front here. And we're just going to use these from the little branches set. This one right here. So you guys, you have the supply list. So I, you know, I could show you what set um, all of these are from. Um, let me just show you because maybe that will be easier. So here, this is from this set. It's this one right here. So the little branch, we're going to be using this. Most of these um, projects are um, are all contained. The only thing that we have to add are things like the trees that we put the snow in and things like that. So there are some, maybe a fence, that those things have to go in after. Once the project is done, then we put those things. So <clears throat> with this one, and you know what, you guys? I was so busy chatting that I forgot to put my post-it tape on. So we need to put post-it tape on here, and you know, you someone, somebody probably told me, and I forget. Vicky says, my parent grandparents spoke German to each other. Yes, my mom spoke German, she spoke Lithuanian too. And she had her German friends. She came to Oregon and, you know, her aunt who was here, they lived in a German community. And so they spoke German. And um, I never I never learned because my mom uh, was trying to speak English. And so she she was having a hard enough time learning English that she didn't never did teach us um, teach us German. But I would listen to her and her friends speak German. And it was just it was just uh, it was really neat. Um, okay, what size again, Sandy? You mean the, the square? It is two, let's see, two and a quarter, two and a quarter by three and three eighths. That is the size of the square. Or it is this nested square. There is a nested, one of the nested dies has a square that is that size or close to it. 
It doesn't have to be this exact size. Just if you have something that's close, that'll be fine. That'll be totally fine. All right, so now we're going to put in these branches and we're just gonna use the, um, the dark brown. And I'm just gonna just kind of put them in just like this. Put one in maybe up here and just, you know, a few kind of in like this. Maybe just a few right here. Just, just however, um, there's no exact perfect way to put them in here and we're gonna add some leaves to them. So um, you just, just put them in. Don't stress out about that. And then here is the little um, foliage that we're gonna be using, one of these two. Um, I use this all the time, just all the time because it's small and it just works great for putting in little foliage like that. So here is the 249. And we're going to just add some leaves in here. Just a few. And let's just put, uh, let's just put one more here. And I think that's probably, I think that's probably good. All right, so now let's add a little water to that. Just kind of blend it up a bit. Not too much because we still want to see the leaves and stuff on here. Just add a little bit of that. And then we're going to add a little bird to it. We're just going to put a little bird on here. And I just picked um, the one from the, um, the bird set. I just picked one of these. And we'll just put, put this little guy on one of these little branches. So let's use the positioner to do that. And I'm just gonna ink him in the brown. And just stamp it right in the corner like so, and I think he will be just great, probably just right here. Huff on that. Okay, got our little bird in. And now let's put in, let's put our trees in, our um, snowy trees. Let's get these in. Now you can use you can use your rubber the rubber ones if you want to. If you've got trees like this that are um, that are rubber, you can use those. Um, I have been using these clear ones from these are from the um, these are from the snow globe set. These are from the snow globe set. This one right here, and I I like them because I can see through them. I can see exactly where they're going. And you know these the ones that are rubber they stamp great. They're absolutely great, but it's hard to to place them. Harder to place them. So I've just been using these, but you you can use whichever trees that you want to use. And these are going to go right here in the front. So we're going to start out with this one right here. And I'm just going to ink it in the dark green. So let me move this out of the way now. You know, if I move away the things that I don't need right away, I just, I end up with way more space. So I just have to make a point to do that. Now I'm going to not ink the whole thing because I don't want, um, actually I can because I have room. So let's just ink the whole thing. I've got room here so I can see, okay, it's going to go right here. And then I'm just going to do a smaller one um, next to it. Like so. And then um, I'm going to put one another tree back here, kind of back in the background. And I think I have, might have room. Let's see, do I have room for another one? Not really. Um, maybe I'll just, we'll just put one up here. Okay, and um, let's see, we want to use um, this little, whoops. We want to use this little tiny grass. Um, and this is from this is from the little mini foliage set. So it is, 
it is in this set right here. So it's this tiny little grass. We're just going to grow it kind of right in front of the, um, the little church and then put snow on it. So we don't have to worry too much about, you know, getting it exactly right. So we're just going to kind of put this in. This little grass is just so, it's so tiny. But it's just perfect for stuff like this. Okay, so now let's add some water to our trees. And you can kind of pull these little branches out if you want to make this tree a little bit bigger. There's enough ink in here that you can do that. You can also kind of drag it down um, a little bit to make your tree look a little more rounded. So see, you can, we can kind of pull some of these leaves down and make that tree look um, like those branches are kind of coming forward. And I'm just adding a little bit to this because we're going to add snow in here, so we don't need to see too much of it. Same thing here, and I've got enough ink on my brush that I can kind of bring this tree clear down to the roof um, of this little church. Now let's put a little um, color into the tree here and we're just going to do that with the brown and actually I'm going to use my little brush. So I'm just going to use this and just pull that, add a little bit of color uh, because we're going to put some snow into this tree. So we, we want to see some color on it so that snow really pops. And, you know, you can, you can kind of add... You can add a few more little branches to this tree too. Just, you got some, you know, you'll have some color on your branches and so you can kind of, you know, just add, just kind of extend these branches out a little bit. Okay, so now let's go ahead and let's put the sky in. We're just going to put this in in the background. And just kind of bring it all the way down here. It's okay if it touches this green. Totally fine. You could do this first too. You could, you could put the sky in before you put the trees in. That would be totally fine to do that. And sometimes I do that, do do that. And just kind of, you know, get this blue in here in between the branches. And again, we want to see this color um, around the tree so that that snow really shows up. And it does... You know, when you're putting this blue in, you know, you're kind of trying to stay away from the um, the branches. So it already looks a little snowy because of that. It's, it kind of leaves a little white border. My mom, you know, also, you know, when she came from the, from the war, she didn't, she couldn't, she didn't have anything. They lost, just lost everything in the war. And, um, so she didn't have, you know, we didn't have any Christmas decorations or things, you know, that she had or, you know, things that she brought with her. But, um, what I do remember, um, when I think back of my childhood and Christmas and 
all of that is um, her. she had these German records. And I don't know when she bought them. I, I remember them from the time I was little. And they were um, all Christmas, you know, songs like O Tannenbaum, you know, with Old Christmas Tree, all in German. And so we learned to sing these carols in German, my sister and I. And um, I still, you know, every time I hear those songs, I think about the German version. But we used to, she used to play those in the background. And um, that's one of my, um, one of my, you know, most vivid memories. And also, how many of you had um, tinsel on your tree? We had so much tinsel and my mom was so picky about it. We had, it was wrapped on these cardboard, um, you know, on these cardboards and it, we, it was, it had to be carefully put on one strand at a time and taken down one strand at a time because, you know, we didn't buy new tinsel every year. We used the same tinsel year after year after year. And, um, <laughs> I just have memories of that, putting that tinsel on the tree because we really, we didn't have that many decorations on the tree. It was mostly tinsel and a few ornaments, but that took forever to put that on. I hated putting it on. <laughs> and then we saved it year after year. Yes, Edna. <clears throat> you know, we just, we, it was a different mentality. Nobody thought about buying new things every year. We just packed it up and saved it. <clears throat> And that really was the extension of our, I mean, the extent of our Christmas decorations, the tree covered in tinsel with the lights, <clears throat> the Christmas German music. And then we had a little plastic um, nativity scene, little plastic nativity scene. It had the leg, I remember the leg was broken off of the sheep, probably, you know, my sister or I, when we were little, probably broke it. Um, and it just, you know, it came out every year that little plastic um, nativity scene. <laughs> we had tinsel as well, Carol says. That had to be put on one strand at a time. Yes! Uh, what is that? Diane says. <laughs> yes, tinsel. And taking it off to save it. Yes! It had to be wrapped on this cardboard. Somehow it didn't get tangled up in the box. I don't know how that happened. But... Um, Vicki says, tinsel and small candles, very German. They had candles on their tree, my mom, when she was little. She had, I think she had tinsel, but they had candles. Um, yes, tinsel was so worn. It was. And this says, we had homemade ornaments made in country school. That was in the 1940s. Oh, wow, Edna. Such a, such simple times, wasn't it? And, you know, we weren't, you know, we didn't think anything about it. It was just as, as, you know, awesome and memorable and fun and exciting with, you know, very few things, you know, a few presents, you know, a tinsel tree, a, a brown, a brown paper lunch bag with special treats in it. Um, Sherry, we had a cardboard nativity scene. I still have it. So this one had a cardboard backing. I wonder if it was similar to that and it kind of interlocked. So the, the crash so the um, the actual nativity or the crash um, kind of interlocked, uh, and it it just it stood up in there, and then the little characters were all plastic. I wonder if that was similar to the one you had. One strand at a time made it look more like icicles. That's what my mom said. That's exactly what she said. It makes it look like icicles. Wow, I haven't thought about that in decades. Ulrike. Uh, my mom cooked on a coal stove. Oh, wow. Wow. Kathleen says, we had the tinsel and I still save it every year. <laughs> it was Also, it was real foil, not the Mylar icicles they sell now. Yes, no comparison. Ours was too. Yep. Diane, I forgot about the cardboard nativity. I know some of these things are, they're so vivid. Um, these memories are just so vivid. Okay. I guess we should get back to our project. You guys, this could be taking longer than I thought. <laughs> okay. So <clears throat> I'm going to just extend this little path just a little bit farther this way. 
just the idea of it. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be exactly all completely filled in. We get the idea that it's coming this direction. And then we want to take a little bit of the blue and just make another bank, you know, like this on the side of the path. This is the side that it would show. If the path is turning, this is the side that we would see it on. Not here, not here, because that would be hidden. And then let's just make this just a little bit darker um, up here. Okay, we wanna get our shadow in the doorway. kind of a must have. And then, you know, if you, you can just put a little shadow and on the side from the top and the side on the window, see how that sets them back. And these, you know, we would just kind of see on this side. Same over here. This is a little bit hidden back in here. Okay, now let's do our little bird. We're just gonna keep him really simple. Maybe we'll just do make a little blue wing on him and we'll just keep him really simple. And we gotta get his little face in here because um, we've just kind of disappeared. His eye little eyes have disappeared. And then let's make sure we can get his feet in here. Okay, so now we want to add some red <clears throat> some red berries in here. And we're just gonna do this with the um with a red with the red pin. Let me move this up a little bit. I'm just going to use the bullet tip and I'm just going to make some little red circles. So just like this. Just kind of a few here and there. I remember when I got oh, when I got a little bit older, making things, um, making decorations. You know, Christmas chains. I used to make those. Um, I made Christmas angels. You know, my pack of construction paper. So I had packs of construction paper, all different colors, and I would cut out things and just put them on the wall. Um, you know, angels or you know, little elves, Christmas elves or Santas or snowman. Um, all kinds of things like that. Okay, we are ready to add our snow um, to our little project. Let's see, is there anything else that we're kind of missing here? I don't think so. I think we're good. All right, so let's get our um, white, our Peach Martin's white. And I'm gonna use my, um, you know, maybe I'll, I'm gonna use my number four. Use my number four brush here and just add some water to the bottom. And then kind of mix that up a little bit. And then we can just gradually start putting it on our tree. And this is just like the easiest thing because you can't mess this up. Just look at the um, just look at the limbs, you know, the branches, and just put the snow on top. Just pile it on. This just changes everything when you put the when you start getting the snow on here. It's just so neat. It's just the snow, um, especially this year, it's just, it's the quiet. And, you know, I just, this is what I wanted to do in this journal too, was the snow. And if I, 
you know, if I make it the actual characters and the actual scene, um, it would be the desert. So now we're going to add some snow to this tree also. And you can just kind of put it, you know, wherever. Let's put a little bit on these little holly branches. Just kind of just plop it on there. Like somebody just, just dumped it right on the top. And then we just want to go over all of this, this area and get that snow on there. A little bit of snow in the background. And we can add some snow to the roof. Add some glitter to yours too. When you get these all finished, add some glitter to it because it just, it also just makes it so cute. And then I'm just gonna make a little streak of white right here for the other side of, this, of the roof. Just bring that right down. You could use your small brush too. You know, especially in the tree. Um, let's just do that. Let me just change that up and use my small brush. I can just get into these branches a little bit easier. And, you know, adding a little bit to the tree trunks makes them kind of frosty. Okay. That looks pretty good. Now let's get our little snowflakes in. Just kind of everywhere. Don't forget the front of the building. You know, when that snow is falling, you're going to you're going to see it uh in the front too. You know, on the sidewalk, just on the trees. Maybe even on the little bird, snow's falling. So fun. This would be good. Just, you know, this alone would be great on a card too, wouldn't it? Wouldn't that be cute? I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to go in the journal. Okay. Let that dry just for a second. And then we're going to add a little blue. We're gonna add a little blue underneath so that we can create that shadow in there. So let me put my lid back on. How are you guys doing? Forgot the fence. Yes, I know, we're doing the fence. We're gonna do that at the very end. But thank you for the reminder, Edna. 
My cat once, Renee, my cat once ate a string of popcorn. We had to pull the string out of him and never did it. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, wow, Marie. Wow. Dr. P.H. Martin White. Yep. Um, oh, we would make snowflakes from notebook paper to decorate the front windows. Oh, yes. This looks fabulous. I still have all my AI watercolor stamps and feel intimidated when I look at them. These lives in Kendra's are invaluable. Thank you so much for doing them. Sending a big hug to your family. Oh, you are so welcome, Marie. It is so fun. And yeah, they are intimidating because they change so much. And sometimes, you know, it's hard to know where to start and where to go from there. So I get that. I absolutely get it. So we're going to be just, we're just going to continue right on doing tutorials for you because it does help. And I don't, you know, I just, if you, I don't want you to buy these things and not use them, you know, because they're intimidating. And then, you know, then it's like, then you have buyer's remorse. It's like, why did I buy this set? You know, I can't even use it. I would never want that. Okay, so I'm just putting a little bit of this blue and you can see how that just kind of pops up. It just pops the snow up, gives it dimension, just like it does on the roof. You know, we put it on the roof. It just creates a bank. And the same with this in the front. And we could just put just a little shadow over here with this tree. And maybe a little shadow here. Got our little bird. Always want to keep the face white. I know I say that all the time, but I just, I can't say it too many times. It's so important to do that. Okay. Let's just get a little bit on these trees and then, oh my goodness, are we done with our first project, you guys? And it's only been, oh, 45 minutes? Okay. Excellent. I'm just going to come under this little, remember that little swatch we made here? I'm just going to come under that with a little bit of um, blue to kind of lift that up. Okay. I think... I think we've got it. I think that's good. Oh, the fence, the fence, the fence. I kept thinking there's something that I forgot. I know there is. Okay, so let's do the fence. And we're just going to use the um, the blue and the brown. I want to make sure that the fence is cool, a cool color. So we're just going to stamp this. You can use your um, you can use your positioner if you want to, just to make sure you get it in the right place. Um, <clears throat> and I really don't have room over here. I mean, I could, I could put it in, but, um, maybe I'll just leave it over here. See how cool that looks. You can also add, you know, some fence posts. If you don't, if you stamp it over and it's, you know, you've got a space, you can just add another one just with your brush. And then just, we're just going to bring this color down a little bit, the shadow. Just like so. All right. Oh, the tree. The tree, the tree. This one. This is where we really need the blue. Is in these branches. So we can really see that that's snow in here. Okay. 
we are finished. We need, you've got to sign a date. So don't forget to sign a date, all of these. These are all individual little paintings. And so they all need to be signed. So now, <clears throat> once that's done, we can erase the lines. Um, or you can, you know, wait and cut it out and then erase the lines afterwards. So, <clears throat> and I'm just going to add, I know we see things at the very end. Just going to add a few little lines into the tree. And especially like a little dark area underneath where the snow is. Just it kind of makes it just pop up a little bit more. A few little more branches in here just cuz all right our little church oh you know what let's just do a, a little texture on the door and there we go oh, I need to sign I need to sign <clears throat> because I told you you have to sign so just get a twin tone here. Actually, maybe I'll just use the maybe I'll just use the black. All right, one down, you guys. <laughs> one down. Okay, let's go on to the next one, and that is the little angel. And she is from the Little Angel set. And what is that? I did not pull that out. So let me just tell you what one that is. That is from... Oh, no, it's, it's part of the stamp. It's part of the stamp. Never mind. This is part of the... This is, this is one of the um, scenic foundations. So there are three. And so everything is contained in this one except for the trees. We're going to put those in and the fence. So this is all one stamp. That's why I didn't add it in there. Okay, so we're going to start out by, um, of course, pulling the color out of the lines. And this is stamped in the two colors. So these, this area here where the ground is, where the snow is, just leave that blue. Everything else can be stamped twice. So you could, you can, or uh, ink twice. So the blue and then the brown and then stamped off twice, at least twice. And then we'll just come in here. I'm using my little brush now because these little structures are really small. And I'm going under the roof line. How's everyone doing? Okay, everybody staying with me. <clears throat> Okay, and let's do her, this little angel. Let's just get her. We don't have to do too much with her because we're adding color. And, you know, we're adding some, um, some color to her. So she's, we don't have to do too much by pulling the color out. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna add some color. <clears throat> I'm gonna add some color now to my little village. And I'm gonna put some green on here. So this is the 249. And let's see, we need the warm brown. The warm brown, so 947. Oh, don't forget to mask it. Oh, yes. Paula, thank you. Good call. Yes, thank you. Oh, my goodness. Wow. 
I, you know what? I would have totally forgot that again. So thank you for that. Yes, be sure to mask off. Mask off your projects. You can actually use your same post-it tape too, which I may end up doing. Yes, don't forget to take, don't forget to mask your project. All right. <clears throat> So we've got some green, we've got some warm brown, um, we've got some blue. So let's add some color now to, to these little houses, just really, really lightly. And a little bit. This is a shady side, so this side's going to be a little darker. And I'm just using my little brush because I'm doing all of these tiny little areas. And maybe let's just do one more over here. You can color these whatever, however you want. There's no um, set way to do it. So if you want to make these, you know, different... Totally fine. And then let's leave the church. We're gonna leave this church white. So we're gonna do this. Let's see, where would the shady side be? Probably right here. And let's get a little bit on here. And what other color? Let's do some green. So this is this would be the shady side here. So this is gonna be just a little bit darker. How's everyone doing? Are you guys keeping up okay? Janice, thank you so much. <laughs> Ruth Hansville, you might have to make dinner. Yes. Could you please suggest that to him? That would be great. <laughs> I'll see you at about nine o'clock tonight. <laughs> Oh, wow. But you know what? When you're doing something really fun, doesn't the time go by fast? Feels like it really goes by fast. And now my, seems like my Wednesday lives are getting so much longer, but they don't feel like they're getting longer. Or I'm getting a lot more long winded. Um, but the time goes by really fast. Here we are at an hour and a half, you guys. <laughs> We're at an hour and a half. But I mean, it's just, it just goes by so fast. Okay, so let's do the little chimneys. Put those in there. Clocks go back tonight, yes. Paula, loving every minute of it. Me too. Right then, we're having a great time. Me too. Me too. Let's just do this one. White. Are you guys able to keep up okay? Some things like this you can do later. <clears throat> so if you if you are feel like you're getting behind, um, you know, putting the the snow, putting the um, the color in the windows, those kinds of things you can do later. And you can see, I'm just I'm hardly taking any color, just the tiniest little bit, and I'm building these these um, banks up again. That's what gives it that snowy look. 
And you can take any roof and do this with it to make it look like snow. Don't forget your little, your shadow under your, your roof, roofs, roofs. Okay. All right, so now let's put our little, um, let's light up our windows. And I'm just using the bullet tip. And then let's just take our twin tone and just kind of darken just the very top of the windows. Because we're kind of looking down on this little village. Okay, I think we got our little village done. The biggest thing is um, the darker color under the under the roof. That's really the biggest thing that's going to make it pop out. And then you know, putting that bank, that snow bank on. And that's going to really make your um, your little village kind of pop. Make it look a little more realistic. Okay, so now let's get our little angel done. And so we wanna use a, um, a flesh tone. And you could use, um, you could use this one, the 850. You could use this one, the 912. Um, both of them are going to work. So let's use the, let's use the 912 and the small brush. And we're gonna need a little red on here. So this is the 856. And then this is the 912. So just take a little bit. It's always better to start out light Start out light. Always, you know, remember to kind of to keep that area by the eyes. And we don't want to drag in too much color from the lines because we don't really don't want to gray up her face. I keep her face pretty light with this flesh tone. And I'm just, you know, kind of coming back in with just a, a just a wet brush, damp, very damp brush. and pretty dry to just kind of blend everything out. Just kind of smooth it out. And 
And then let's just take a little bit of this and get her little cheeks in here. And get her little hand. Just brush it in. It's so, you know, using a brush, you just, you don't have to worry about the, about the lines, the marker lines, you know, and when you're doing the, the flesh tone, um, don't, don't worry so much about pulling the color out of the lines because we want to kind of keep that light, that color light. You could make it a little bit darker at her hairline, you know, where her hairline is, you could do that. And then we're going to take some of this brown and just get um, her hair. And don't add the color all the way to the top. Leave a little white space at the very top where that light is just kind of coming down. Little red shoes. This, you know, having a little brush <laughs> really makes a difference. This is when you really need it when you're doing little stuff like this. And then let's get this little band on her, her little belt. All right, so now we just want to get a little um, a little shadow in here, you know, from her dress. And then this sleeve over here is kind of in the shadow, so we can make that a little darker. And then underneath her wing, we can make that a little bit darker and add some sparkle. That would be so cute to just add a little glitter to her wings. So it'd be pretty dark in here underneath and then actually all across that shadow where her little dress is. Okay, so now I'm going to get the twin tone um, because we've lost her face. And, you know, as far as the nose goes, you know, it's almost better to just do the nose with a pencil so that it's not too dark. And then we can add just a few more little, little hairs in here.
And then I took um, I took a, my gold, my little gold um, signal, and I just colored this trumpet in gold. You could do it silver too, silver or gold. And then I just made a little, um, little halo on her head. And then let's get the blue in the sky. And we want to leave it a little bit light around her so that it sort of gives you the impression that she's casting a light, that she's glowing a little bit. Um, so we want to keep that darker around the corners. And we just start here in the, in the corners, just like this. Just, you know, start over here where it's just a little bit um, off to the side. And then just use your um, your brush, just get a, your brush just wet and just kind of drag the color over. <clears throat> just kind of, you know, drag it over to the center. Keep it, just keep it light. Kind of gradually um, bring it over. And just be careful you don't touch any of the lines, her little lines, her hands or her dress or anything. And it should just kind of fade into where she is. So it looks like she's got a little bit of a halo um, around her. And you know, it's okay, your, your paper can handle um, the water, your watercolor paper. So don't worry about that. Just kind of just drag it all around. I think that's good. So we're just going to make a few little lines here where this background is. And then let's get our trees in. So we're going to start out here on the bottom. And then we'll put... Um, Put some more trees in the background once this is all dried. It'll take a little bit for that sky to dry. So we're gonna we're gonna start out with these. So I'm gonna take the small one. Where is the small? This is the small one. And I'm just gonna stamp a few um, little trees right down here in the bottom with my green, um, which I've lost already. Right, so green. Here it is. And I'll just do another one. And then maybe another one right here. And that feels pretty dry, so we can get these trees in now. And let's see. You can, you know, put your trees wherever. So if you stamp it, it doesn't look like it's in the exact same spot as mine. It doesn't matter. Just leave it right where it's at. It's totally fine <clears throat> because these trees can just grow anywhere. 
And you know what? Every time I uh, stamp these, they're in a different place anyway. So um, we never worry about that. Okay, and then I'm going to take uh, this little foliage, and this is from that mini foliage set. Let's see where that is. I can show you. Mini foliage set is, oh, and here's the fence. This is where we got the fences from the little barn set. And where is that? Here. So we're going to take this one this little stamp right here. And I'm just gonna ink the bottom because I don't need this huge, big row. So I'm just gonna ink the bottom and just get a little bit in here. And you know, if you're not sure about where it's going, you can use your, your positioner. And I just, I think probably need about this much. And then just a few, just kind of up here. And we can just put a little blue shadow kind of coming down here. Like so. And let's put a few other little trees in the background. So I just used this. This is from the... Um, this is from the little church, the little church set. Where is that? This one. The little church set, this little tree, so the small one right here. And we're just going to stamp it in the background. So I want to cover this little steeple. I don't want that to get inked. So I'm just going to take this and just cover it like that. And I'm going to ink this in the blue. So just a plain blue. And I don't even need the whole thing. I'm just going to ink a little bit of it. Just like that. And then let's do another one over here. And we'll do the same thing. And you know what? We could just add another little bit. This post-it tape is just the best. So I, I usually never actually cut an actual mask. I just kind of lay it over the top just to protect the areas. So just like that. Just to make sure it doesn't stamp on my rooftops and and all of that. So cute. And we could just put a little shadow under these trees. They don't need any um, water. Just leave them be. You don't have to add any detail to those. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit of um, blue right where these little houses are sitting just a little just a little shadow and we'll get that fence in once we get all the white on we'll get the fence in here all right so now let's get our peach martin's white paint catch everyone okay deborah thanks for joining us <laughs> we'll see you on the replay Sandy, I don't have the set just following along. Yeah, Sandy, you may you may do this next year. So totally fine. 
Totally fine. Did you guys, are you guys all good as far as um, nothing freezing up or anything? Phil's on his way to a game. He's going to see the the um, Oregon Ducks play. So that's his happy place. He lo loves, loves going to do that. All right. So we're going to get some white paint. And I'm just adding a little water to it. So you kind of you have to um, water it down a little bit. And if it's too much, if it's too watered down, it's just going to, it's just going to be too light and it's going to show through. You just go over it again. Just do another coat. Bonnie, you're such an... Oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Kathy. You're an inspiration to all of us. All of us. We just, we appreciate you guys so much. All right. So now let's get our white paint on and watch the magic. <laughs> That's what I always think of it. Watch the magic come through. And you know, before the white paint, we had to leave space for the snow. We had to use the masking fluid and leave space so that we could, you know, put the snow on the trees. And it was just so much harder to do that. And now we've got the white paint that's just absolutely changed everything. And I don't know how long it's been around, but I sure never knew about it. And when I first um, saw it and tried it, I literally was doing the happy dance, you guys. That would have been something to see. <laughs> I was so, so excited. It just was such a game changer. I just knew it was gonna change everything. Okay, just keep putting our little white on. I could have used my, um, my small brush. These trees are, because the trees are so little, but we're almost done here. If you ever have, you know, a little mess up or anything, you just cover it up with the white. It just covers up everything. And these, you know, little trees, I mean, you could just put a little bit of white kind of around them, just a tiny little just dab of white just to show that they've they've got some snow on them. But you really don't have to do too much. All right, I'm gonna to switch to my um, my little brush. And switch to this little brush so we can do the snowflakes falling down. This is the funnest part. Getting some little snowflakes in. And don't forget to get them on her, too. She's She's got snow falling around her and her little trumpet. Put as much as you want. You know, you don't have to put as much as I do. I just, sometimes I just get carried away with this white because I don't like to put it away. <laughs> I just like using it so much that I'm always like, oh, so that I'm just, I'm done with it now, I guess. I've used it. And now it's time to put it away. 
So I always try to find another place that I can put some more white. So sometimes I get a little over the top with the snowflakes, but I don't know, can you have too many snowflakes? All right, so now um, let's look at the um, the little roofs and see if we need to add um, anything on the roofs. So just along the edge, just like this. Okay, now we just need to um, let this white dry a little bit and then we'll get our, um, our little fences in. <clears throat> okay. Clean that off, put the lid on. And let's see, let's wait till that dries a little bit. Let's go ahead and put our um, blue shadow in. Just a little bit of blue. You don't even have to get every one of them um, of these, you know, little snowy areas, but getting just getting a few in there will really give you that impression that that snow is just piled on there. These little trees in the front. Okay. Got our little snowy roofs. We can put a little shadow where the um, chimneys are too. Doesn't that, doesn't that change everything, just putting that little shadow on there? A lot of times I forget to do this, but um, especially when the light, you know, if it's there's something bright above it, it's casting this shadow. When you put that in, it really, it makes it more dramatic. And waiting for that to dry, it just kind of gives you a little bit of time to kind of look at everything and see if you need to add a little color anywhere, fix anything. Okay, so let's put that little fence in. Let's see if this is dry, it's pretty dry. Um, so we're going to use this, which one are we using? Using this one. Let's use this smaller one here. I think that'll fit, probably fit right there. So we're going to use the two colors and I, you know, I always put everything up in the top corner. I know I've told you guys this before, but this really helps me. Um, and also if you look at the fence, um, uh, the little boards, our, one side it has them shorter and one side has them taller. The shorter side is what we need on the bottom because they're in the snow. They're in the snow. So we don't want to see the taller, the taller boards. And then if you put it in the corner, it's much easier to position. You can see, kind of see where it's going. You know, rather than in the center. It's just, it's harder to see in the center. Especially when it's rubber. So blue first. And then brown. And we'll just put it in here like that. And then we'll just put 
a little piece of post-it tape. Oh, let's see if we've got another one here. And we'll just add a fence in here. And I don't know if we have room for any more fence. I think that's good. And actually, you know what we could do is um, we could just add another post right here, right here like that, kind of off the page. And in here like this too. So now we just want to make that little shadow. So just drag down these posts, same same as the kind of like the roof, the chimney. Drag those little posts down. And then um, just take a little bit of blue, tiny bit, really, really light, and just go along the bottom and get that shadow in. Make a big difference. Okay. You guys, we're ready for the reveal. She is finished. Our little angel with her message. There we go. And I'm going to sign right here. Right at the bottom. Okay, there she is. You guys, we've got two down, and it's only been two hours. <laughs> two hours? Who's having fun besides me? I'm having the best time. So fun at Kim. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for coming by. You know what? If you got to be in and out, totally fine. Vicki says, white paint. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. I know, me too. You know, life is good when white paint brings joy to your life. <laughs> it's the little things, isn't it? I mean, a little white paint. I can't tell you what that did for me when I found this white paint. And I ordered it and I tried it on a tree. And I just, I mean, you could have heard me from the neighbors. It was so fun. It was so fun. And Marisa's having the best time shopping the website. <laughs> Excellent. Great, Marie. Thank you for that. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. And you know what, you guys? We we know how to do a little village, right? We've done a little village, and we know how to do another one. So we'll do this little one. This one will be easy. This one will go quick. So let's get that one out. And we're going to do this little project. And this time, I'm going to remember to mask off my painting, mask it off. Okay, so this is gonna go here. And you know what, just reuse these because they're great. They're great, you can use them over and over again, except I don't want that to be crooked, so let's Let's just move this a little bit and get that straight on here. Okay, you guys, how many of you are still on? <laughs> I still see comments, so yes. <laughs> Ruth Ann, who's counting time? <laughs> no break time, right, Edna? Oh my, how fun. How fun, you guys. Okay, so now, okay. I have got, okay, look at what I did. So I cleaned my paintbrush in both of my waters. So I need to dump one of these out. So don't go away. Let me just run and dump this out. I literally be, will be back in like 30 seconds. Don't go away. Don't go away, you guys.
Okay, I'm back. I'm back and I now have clean water. So, you know, also when, um, what I found is that you're white. So if you, when you clean your brush off, this changes the color, your colors, which will be really fun. I want to, I want to, um, kind of investigate that a little bit more, um, next year, but adding some white paint also to your palette to you when you, um, are mixing your colors also changes the color. So, um, there's some really fun things ahead. You guys, we're going to, we're just going to get to be more and more like painters, more and more like painters. There's going to be more fun things ahead. Um, Roberta had to dump my cup too. Okay, good. <laughs> oh, Sandy, I have, to, I'm still here, but having to go in and out because of freezing. Oh, shoot. Anybody else having problems with that? Vicky, I did the same thing. <laughs> Carmen, yay, she's back. She's back. You know what? Take a break when you need to take a break and, um, and then come back. All right, so let's um, get our small brush because we're doing this tiny little village here. Tiny little village. And so we're just pulling this color out just like we did before, only this one is way tiny. So we don't really have to do too much. Under the roof line, you know, of course. And then let's add some color. Add a little color and maybe just a little green. Let's do the south green. I always start with a shady side um, because that's where the darkest color is. And then you can take that and just add a little water to it, to your brush, and you can do the light, the light side. Because it just, it needs just a tiny little bit, just a, just a teeny bit of color. And let's take, let's just take some of this color. And this one in the back, maybe we just do this one just with the blue. And maybe this one over here. Okay. So now we're going to just put our shadows in just like we did before and build our bank onto our roofs. Okay. And then I just, just went in with my darker blue, just a little bit darker blue, and just get those overhangs underneath. And see that shadow. Okay, and this one's kind of in the distance, so let's just use our um, our brown. And actually, you know, when I made this, I um, the scripture is about Joseph, and they went on this, you know, they were traveling to... Um, to Bethlehem from Nazareth. And so I made this little village in the background and I was going to put in the yellow, uh, but then I thought the village, it wasn't welcoming. So I put the brown in because um, they weren't welcome there. There was no place for them to stay. So you can, you can, um, you can put the yellow in if you want to, but that was what um, I was thinking when I, when I made it.
Okay. Got my little windows in. And let's add a little color to um, the chimneys. So we're just gonna add a little bit of this brown onto here. And we're gonna do the same thing with the sky where we've got kind of got a glow over this um, little village. And so we're gonna start out with a darker color on the outside. So I'm gonna use my darker, my bigger brush and I'm gonna take my, um, my blue and I'm just gonna kind of drag this color over starting with a darker color uh, in the corners. And then just drag, kind of drag this color down. We're gonna do the same thing here that we did with the other path. And we're just gonna put, put our color onto the path. So we're just gonna drag it down, pull that color from the lines to the inside. And when you get to the tree, um, <clears throat> just be careful not to, you know, try not to touch the branches too much, just like we did with the other tree where we kind of left a white, um, edge around it. I want to kind of do that again so we can really see where the snow is on the branches. And just bring that, just bring that color all the way down. And you get enough water um, because your paper, you know, like I said, your paper can handle it. It's a long, windy path. It's a long journey for them. And you know, it's gonna be darker kind of here at the at the end. It's gonna be a little darker up here. And then we're gonna do the same thing that we did before. We're gonna just create a bank. So what you wanna think about is the front, you know, the front of the bank. So as it comes around, this is where we'll we'll see it. So think about that dome, a dome. We wouldn't see anything over here, but as it comes around, here's where we're gonna see it. And the same here. And then this, you know, of course is gonna be darker. And we're just kind of basically what we're doing is we're just building a mound, building kind of building up a mound, a snow mound, and making it look three dimensional. And on this side, you know, we're going to see it as it kind of comes around here.
All right, there we've got our little path in. It's just so fun to make these kinds of things. They're just, they're so much fun to do. And it just, it takes just these little, simple little tricks to do it. And I'm just dragging this color now out of the lines, you know, for these little trees. And we're going to do this one just like we did the other one. And, you know, we can add some more branches to it. <clears throat> and let's get some more trees in now and some more color. So I'm going to take my twin tone. And I'm just going to darken some of these branches because I really want to see that snow. And just get, you know, a few more little branches in here. You know, to get these little branches in, you really, you know, have to hand draw them because they're so tiny and a stamp is going to be, um, the lines are going to be too dark, too thick. But if you, you know, have courage to do it, it's, they're not, it's not hard at all. And it will add a lot more dimension to your painting, make it look a lot more realistic. Okay, how are we doing? How's everyone? Where's the supply list? Um, Terry, if you go to um, artimpressions.com and you'll see the slideshow scrolling, click on, those, on the, um, the graphic that says the Nativity Journal. Click on that graphic and it'll take you to the bundles page. And click on the Nativity Journal bundle and it will, there will be some images below it and the supply list is right there. You'll see it. Diane, I love your imagination mixed with reality. Ah, oh, thank you. That's a, that's exactly what it is. Anita, we'll see you later. Thanks for stopping by. I'm here. Okay, Brenda says I'm here until 1.45. Yes. <laughs> it's 11.17. I mean, we may still be here at 1.45. We probably will be. Um... Seattle has gotten some bad rain, Cheryl. Are you in Seattle? Uh, we just got the edge of it here in Oregon. But I think up there, you guys got it pretty bad. I think you got a lot of rain dumped on you. All right, let's do our little trees. We are getting good at trees. Trees are just, they're a no-brainer now. You guys are getting so good at it. So I'm going to put in... Some trees right here, and I think I can fit a whole one here. Yes, I can do that. And then maybe a small one right there. And maybe another one right there. And let's see, we want a big tree down here. So we're just going to kind of keep stamping it down. And we can kind of swing it out a little bit. Swing it out a little bit. And we got a bigger tree. And let's see. We just want a little one right there. And then we're going to add some trees in the background. Some um, of this tree. This is from the snow globe set as well. This little tree. It's just a great little tree. And we're going to do the brown and the blue. Or, and actually, you can do it in the reverse. You can do it the other way, too. And I'm just going to put this tree in the background, but I'm going to, I don't want it to come too far forward, so I'm just going to stamp it back here. And then let's do another one. And I'm just going to add a little more blue to it. Like so. And maybe we just need to stop on it and get a little bit over here. Okay, so now let's add some water. Tap the water in. And just kind of drag it around. Drag those, you know, little branches forward if you want to. And then 
this one. And, you know, you can stamp these right in front of this path because by the time we add that white to it, it's going to cover up everything. So even though we're kind of stamping it over a dark color, um, it's okay. Totally fine. And let's do this big tree. And I just, all I'm doing is just kind of adding the water and just kind of softening the lines up. And we're going to just kind of bring this one forward too. Debbie is on. Hi, Debbie. Welcome. Cheryl says, just outside in Kirkland. Yes, it's been dumping. Oh, it just, it's like a water bomb, isn't it? I mean, it just... It's like the sky opens up and a bucket dumps out. It's a, it's kind of, it's really scary when you're driving in it. Okay, so now I think we are ready to do um, our white paint. So I'm going to get my brush wet. And you know what, even if your jar looks like this, look how crusted this is on here. Just take a, a knife or something and just scrape it off into the bottom and add a little water and mix it up. And it's literally good as new. And when I first started using this, I threw away um, jars of it because I thought it was bad and dried up. And then I saw a, um, a YouTube I saw someone on YouTube using it and they were saying that you just, you reactivate it with water and I couldn't believe it. And it, it does, it does. It totally reactivates just like perfect. Just like, just like new. Got our snow on here. This is the funnest part. It never gets old. <laughs> Putting the snow on here never gets old. It's just, it's always just as much fun. And where is my, and these that are kind of in the front, don't forget the branches that kind of come down in the front, you know, get those, get those piles of, um, snow kind of in the front not just just on the sides so see that these branches that are coming forward they're just the snow is just dumping on those branches Okay, now I'm going to switch over to my little brush. My little brush, and I'm going to do um, that bare tree. So we'll get our snow in here now. So just, you know, add a little water, kind of mix it up. This is why I think it works best taking it from the jar. And I don't know how you guys do it, but I have tried it from my palette and it just, it dries up so fast that I feel like this is the best way. It's kind of messy. 
uh, because it does kind of make the sides messy. But, you know, if you can just scrape it off and, you know, make it good as new, then it's not as big of a deal. And, you know, the snow is going to kind of collect right in here where the branches, you know, kind of those V's where the branches come together. And that's where you just want to concentrate it. And, you know, we can put just a little bit on these other trees, just a, just a little bit. Just to make it look like they've also got snow collecting on them. Okay, now we can put our snowflakes in. And don't forget, in the path, in the front, we would see these snowflakes everywhere fallen. Let's see what else we need. We've got to get our um, shadow, our blue shadow uh, on the trees. So let me close up my paint. And then I'm still using my little brush and I'm just gonna come under, under here. And you can see that just really, it really makes a difference. Just makes it, makes that, creates that bank. It looks like it's a pile. And I'm going to just make a little, um, shadow here where these trees are and then just a little shadow here too and we could we can do this little shadow with the um, chimneys too Okay, this one went faster. We're getting faster. We are finished with this one. Who's keeping up? Oh, Ruth Ann, thank you. She says, you're such a good teacher in every aspect. Oh, you guys, that's so kind. You know what? I've never taken an art class. <laughs> so the things that I tell you are just things that I innately know in my mind. So I'm really, I'm not a, I'm not a trained um, artist. I'm not a trained teacher. Um, <laughs> Ruth Ann, can you imagine talking to a video with no eyes? Back. <laughs> you know what? You can't think about it too much. 
um, because I am just talking to myself in my office, talking to my phone, but I can see your comments and I know you guys are out there. So, um, <laughs> it is, it is a little strange. Okay, everyone, it's been nine, 10, 11, 30, 11, 30, two and a half hours. Do we need a little break after this one? Should we take a 20 minute break and then I'll come back? Do you guys need to stretch your legs and then, um, then <laughs> my art mouth is for it. No art classes. No. Um, I, you know, I always wanted to take art classes, but I ended up only going part time in my senior year of high school so I could go to work. And so I never had a chance to take all of those electives and all of those art classes. So what I'm teaching you are just things that I just know. I know in my mind, I know that there, <laughs> that this is a way to do it. And so I don't, it's not because I'm trained. So, um, <laughs> you guys are so kind. Okay. Diane says a short break. Let's take a 20 minute break. It's 1130. I will be back in 20 minutes. You guys, I'll give you a chance to catch up a bit. And then, um, um, I can clean out my water. Maybe you need to clean your water too. And I will, I will be back. So let me just um, switch back over here for a second. Okay, you guys, I'm so proud of you keeping up with me. You guys are doing great. And so many of you are still on. I cannot believe it. Thank you so much. I can't believe you guys are still on. Um, I will be back. I'm going to um, also take a, another break. I've got to heat up my coffee. So I've got to put it in the microwave, get my coffee heated up. And, um, and then I'll be back on with you again. <laughs>